Welcome to Frankly Speaking Sports. I'm your host, Larry Frank. So very, very happy to have you with us on this Tuesday evening. We are coming live from Bentonville, Arkansas. And we have a great, great show for you tonight. Uh, we're going to be talking about a lot of different topics as usual tonight. But we're going to do it a little differently this evening. What we're going to do is we're going to open up the phone lines tonight. We have gone ahead and put a phone number up there for you to call. Remember, if you are calling, that we have one phone line in here. If we are not currently on the phone, go ahead and call. When you answer the phone, you'll be on live, and we will then announce you as you come on. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the NBA to start off the show tonight because a lot of things have been going on in the NBA. And then the rest of our show is going to be around the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We're going to break down the entire depth chart on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, tell you what their strengths are, tell you if they have any weaknesses, and tell you where I personally think we may need a little help just to solidify our chances of getting back to the promised land. And of course, everybody knows the promised land is back to Tampa for the next Super Bowl, which will be held in Tampa Bay. So we're looking forward to that. Want to remind you all, as I always do when we start our show, for those of you just tuning in right now, if you can do me a favor and please go ahead and share this on your timeline. Please go ahead, share it on your timeline, invite your friends, and when you here, do me a favor, we have a lot of different platforms. I really, really encourage you to participate. This is not a show where I just get up and you get to look at my beautiful face and, you know, and that's that. I want you to participate. I want you to ask questions whether on whatever topic in the relations of the world of sports there is, whether it's baseball, football, hockey, uh, you know, whatever it might be, please go ahead and we'll do our best to answer the questions. Now, once again, we are allowing fan participation over the telephones tonight. It is a new thing we are incorporating. We only have at the current time one line. So the number that you see, and if you can't see it, I did put it on display for you. The number here is 479-553. 7008, you call, the phone will be answered, and then when the next person hangs up, the other person can call in next. Um, also, you can leave a comment here. We got a huge comment section. Leave comments, and we'll try to get to your questions. But once again, if you're just joining us, uh, we are going to talk quickly about some NBA news that came down, and then we're going to go ahead, and most of the rest of the show is going to be geared towards the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the upcoming season. Once again, leave your questions, call in, whatever you like. We're glad to have you here on this Tuesday evening. Um, if you have not heard the NBA, and thank goodness for Adam Silver, what a great, great leader he is, he is showing that he is. I mean, he came out today and already announced July 22nd, through the 29th. So those of you wondering how far that, that's less than a month away, or about a month away, the NBA will play, each team that is invited to Orlando is going to play three scrimmages in that six-day period. So all those teams are going to get to play three scrimmages with teams that are staying in the same hotel as they are. So great, great news there. Um, a message from Adam Silver about the resumption of the season came out. He said, and I quote, A central goal of our restart will be to utilize the NBA's platform to bring attention and sustain action to issues of social injustice. Great. I commend you. I commend you. I commend you, Adam Silver. Thank you so much for leading the way um, in everything that you do. I just wish the other sports, specifically baseball, could learn a lot from you. Now, the NBA teams will have a 35-person traveling party that they're allowed to have. That include athletic trainers, uh, 
strength and conditioning coaches, equipment managers, team security, etc. Now, if those of you who think these players are coming back and they're going to be stuck in a bubble for a couple of months if the team uh, keeps winning, don't feel sorry for them. Listen to these amenities that they're going to have at each of these hotels. This is awesome. The players are going to have a players-only lounge, which includes NBA 2K, TVs, and gaming. They're going to have pool, trails, barbers, manicures, a 24-hour VIP concierge, daily entertainment. They're going to have movies, movie screenings, DJ sets, video games, ping pong, pool, uh, lawn pool games. Players can also attend the other games. So one thing to know that the players who are not playing as far as that are competing in other games there are allowed to attend the other games. Also, the league sent out to all of its players. Look, look how organized they are. They already sent out the game day schedules. And for those of you that have not seen it, I'm not going to go over it on tonight's show. But it is posted on the Frankly Speaking Sports page. So all of you can look at that and get just a quick synopsis of what the day in a basketball player's life is going to be while they are in Orlando. And I'm telling you, it looks pretty darn good. Now, if for any reason they leave the hotel room, they leave the hotel room and leave the campus, that's what they're calling it, the resort is their campus, they cannot, they have to be quarantined 10 to 14 days before being allowed back. NBA players, now this is the great thing, the NBA players, if they choose not to play in this resumption of the year, they have a right to do so. They need to let the commissioner's office, the league, know by June 24th. And they will not be disciplined for not playing in this upcoming season. The only thing is their salary, should they just decide not to play, will be prorated. Now, the great thing about this is if there is a player who um, is considered high risk, may get sick because of this virus is very likely the nba has said that they will pay them their full salary and they will not be disciplined and they do not have to play so just you know great great stuff out of the nba and i i just wish that uh like i said some of these other leagues and you know the nfl will do it the nhl of course i'm going to talk as little about baseball unless a question comes up from a fan today in regards to the baseball season because I'm just sick of it and I don't want to talk about it. I said my keep yesterday on that and we'll just leave it at that unless a question comes up. As always, my listeners decide what I talk about, so I will be more than happy to do that. Um, for those of you just joining us, we are going to get into the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers here in a minute. And start talking about the upcoming 2020 season. Want to remind you, if you're just joining us, that we are going to have an interactive program tonight. Um, unless one of a surprise caller calls in that is somebody that I asked to be on the show, we will only take calls coming in from you, our listeners. So the number I posted, the number here is 479 553 7008. If you want to get in on the line and speak to us live and ask a question, we'll do our best to answer that question. Or just go ahead and leave a comment right here in the comment section and we'll do our best at answering that question. Whether it's about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers or whether it's about any other team, any other sport, we will do our best to go ahead and answer all of your questions. Just a reminder, if you happen to miss this show tonight and you come back and you say, well, I can't watch it because I can't see it, don't worry. We have all these different platforms you can watch our show on. Spotify, Anchor, uh, Bullhorn, Apple, Google, all different podcasts you can listen to on that station. Also, our new famous YouTube channel, Frankly Speaking Sports, all our previous interviews, all our previous podcasts, 
All our future podcasts and interviews will be on our YouTube channel. So please, please go ahead and listen. Enjoy the show. Invite your friends. Put it to their timeline. Really love to get as many people involved in the show tonight asking questions and joining us on the Frankly Speaking Sports Hotline. Um, I also want to let you know that um, a little bit later in the show, we will also be going over some of the next things that are going to be happening on our show. But let's go ahead. Let's get into the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You know, first thing I did when I look at a team, and any time I talk about a team, I want to make sure I got all my ducks in a row. And obviously, I'm very familiar with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I've had season tickets now for a couple of years. And I'm very, very happy that I have. Unfortunately, they waited for me to move away before bringing in Brady and uh, Gronk. But that's okay. But, um, you know, when you look at this depth chart, before we get into it, let's talk about coaching. You know, Bruce Arians, they got the right coach here. And a lot of questions have come up over the last couple of months. I have heard on different shows and great shows. You know, don't get me wrong. But the question was, who's going to call the plays? Is it going to be Bruce Arians? Is it going to be Brian, you know, Byron Leftwich? I'm going to tell you right now, you can all stop asking that question. Byron Leftwich is definitely going to be calling the plays. Now, don't get me wrong. Bruce Arians obviously is the head coach, and he's going to have the final say on whatever goes on. But, you know, I think you really have to trust Byron Leftwich. If you look at a lot of the plays that were called last year, except for that dawn play that ended the season. I don't know how many times they ran that play, and it didn't work last year, and it went for a pick six. But other than that, I thought Byron Leftwich did a really, really good job calling plays last year. It was the execution, the key to winning is executing. It doesn't matter if I call the plays, Bruce Arians calls the plays, Byron Leftwich calls the plays, or if Bill Walsh comes back down from the heavens and calls the plays. At the end of the day, you have to execute. And I think last year, where some of the difficulty came in, um, was the execution of the plays. We have different people in, in key places now that hopefully will be able to execute these plays, and if not, know what to do when you can't execute these plays. So I, to answer that question, Byron Leftwich will be the play caller. And he didn't bring Byron Leftwich over just so, you know, he couldn't call the plays. Byron Leftwich was brought over to be the offensive coordinator, and that's what Byron Leftwich is, I'm sorry, and that's what Byron Leftwich is going to do. He's going to call the plays. Bruce Arians has a lot of confidence in this young man. He has a great, great, uh, you know, IQ for calling the game and seeing things. And I think you'll be very happy with the success in year two that Byron Leftwich will have, especially with a veteran like Tom Brady at quarterback and a couple other key pieces. So to answer that question, Byron Leftwich is the play caller, just like on defense, Todd Bowles will be calling the defensive plays. Now, let's go ahead and look at some of this depth chart. You know, and the first thing, you know, a lot, a lot of times, we talk about quarterback, okay? Everybody knows what you're getting in Tom Brady. If you don't, then you haven't been watching football. Tom Brady, the, the big question of Tom Brady is going to be, you know, is, is, uh, Father Time going to catch up to Tom Brady? And I don't know about that. And let me explain why. Tom Brady, you know, it's amazing when you're a great quarterback like Tom Brady because you can still throw over 4,000 yards, 28 touchdowns, 8 interceptions, and still be considered only an okay season because everybody expects so much out of Tom Brady. Now, I'm going to tell you something about Tom Brady, and I've said this many, many, many times on previous podcasts. Tom Brady was not brought over, you know, because of the great success he has had in the past at quarterback. He has been brought over because of the great success he has had at limiting mistakes. 
And that's what haunted the Tampa Bay Buccaneers last year. If you think about it statistically, Winston threw for 5,000 yards and 30-something interceptions, more than Tom Brady. But he also threw for 30 interceptions, which killed us last year as a team. So now you can bring a Tom Brady in here, and I will tell you right now, I would not be surprised if Tom Brady has an unbelievable breakout year either. He has the two best wide receivers in football. He has a, you know, a decent offensive line, which we'll go over in a minute. And, uh, you know, he has Gronk with him now. So here's an opportunity. When you have a Godwin and an Evans, and now you add Gronk to the equation, and don't forget, we'll go over Gronk in a second, but here's a guy that's had five years, I think, since 2010, where he's actually had over 1,000 yards receiving as a tight end. And, you know, that's just incredible, and that tells you how much – Tom Brady uses his tight ends. So just a remarkable. But when you go down there, Brady, like I said last year, I'm sorry, he threw 24 touchdowns, 4,000 yards, and eight interceptions without a receiver. I mean, all he had was, Ju what, Julian Edelman? And, I mean, you know, he's, I think, the only one that hasn't been brought over to Tampa Bay yet. So, you know, you know, that's going to be fine at quarterback. We all know that. What worries me at the quarterback position is depth. You have Blaine Gabbert, who has been a journeyman quarterback. He started, obviously, everybody remembers him with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Has not really had any good years in the NFL. He came in at one time, I think last year, with the uh, Titans when Mariota got hurt. Did not do anything. And now he's back with the Bucs. But the reason the Bucs brought in Blaine Gabbard is not because of his success ratio as a backup quarterback. It's his knowledge of the playbook. It's his knowledge of knowing Bruce Arian's system. And they want him to be able to tutor and, you know, help out Tom Brady a little bit faster. And now with COVID-19 and then not be able to do all the OTAs and everything, I think you're going to definitely find out that uh, this is going to be very helpful, but from a depth position, you know, you got Ryan Griffin after that. That's if they decide to keep three quarterbacks. You know, it's going to be a question mark there. You know, you got to really, really hope that Tom Brady stays healthy because behind him, you have nothing but a backup. You don't have a... Yes, he has started before. You know, that, that does help, the experience. But other than that, it's it could be very tough if for some reason, and I don't wish this on anyone, that Tom Brady goes down. Now, when you look at our receivers, you know, we by far, by far, I will argue with everybody on any day that we have by far the best tight ends in football. You talk about Rob Gronkowski, okay? Um, Rob Gronkowski, listen to this. The last full year he played, he didn't do great in 2018, okay? He only had three touchdowns, 682 yards receiving, 42 receptions. But if you go back to his healthy season in 2017, look at these stats in 2017. If you guys want to get excited, if you Buck fans really want to be excited, this is what I would be excited Rob Gronkowski is probably healthier now than he has been in the past 10 years. In 2017, the year before he retired, he had 69 receptions, 1,084 yards receiving, and 8 touchdowns. Listen to these career, his stats with Tom Brady. If this doesn't get you in an uproar, nothing will. 521 receptions. Over 7,000 yards and 79 touchdowns. 79 touchdowns he has in, in not even 10 years playing. I think in nine, actually eight years because he didn't play last year. So just incredible, incredible amount to use. And then you got O.J. Howard. But if you look at Howard last year, he, you know, he had 34 receptions. 
459 yards, only one touchdown. You know, the real guy that goes underrated on this tight end scheme is Cameron Brait, who actually took less money to stay with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Brait, yes, only had 36 receptions, but, you know, remember, they didn't use their tight ends a lot. He had 311 yards and four touchdowns. And I'm going to tell you what. And, you know, I told you I'm going to break these things down, and I'm going to explain it to you so you can completely understand. One of the things about Rob Gronkowski that I can't really remember the last time they had this is they have a blocking tight end. They have a tight end that is unbelievable when it is when it comes to blocking uh, against the pass, on the run, whatever it is. Gronk likes to hit people. And that's what you need. You need that type of toughness. That's what Bruce Arian loves about Gronk. If he can just tutor O.J. Howard on how to block and how to keep that blocking and get him to be mean, because if you look at Bray, if you look at O.J. Howard and you look at Gronk, I think if you look at them, they're all about the same height. 6'6", six, 6'5", six, six, right around there, and they all weigh around 250 pounds. They're all the same size, and I know that's hard to believe because Gronk looks like such a beast out there, but they are the same size. It's just that Gronk knows how to use that size to his advantage, and if he can just tutor, you know, O.J. Howard and Cameron Brait, you know, we are going to see some history made out of the tight end position down in Tampa Bay this year. And then let's go to the receivers. I mean, what can you say about these receivers as long as they stay healthy? You got Chris Godwin, you got Mike Evans, you got uh, Tyler Johnson, you got Scotty Miller. You know, some people may say Justin, Justin Watson. I think he might be the odd man out this year. I'm not saying he will be, but I think there's a good possibility. And one of the things you got to remember is you look at the statistics, neither Godwin or Evans played the last two games of the year. I think Evans might have been a little longer. Chris Godwin had 86 receptions last year. 86. He had 1,333 yards receiving, and he had nine touchdowns. And then you go ahead and you look at Michael Evans. He had 67 receptions. 1,157 yards, and he had eight touchdowns. So unbelievable, you know, as equally used both of these guys. And now you got to, you know, you got a lot of trouble now coming for opposing teams because you had a Tyler Johnson. And, you know, one of the things against Tyler Johnson in college was that he did have a tendency to drop some easy passes. But when they were in the red zone, his college team was in the red zone. I believe it was Minnesota, maybe. I'm trying to remember where he went. But um, he had ridiculous numbers in the red zone where he caught like 23 passes last year, a number of different touchdowns, just a great red zone receiver. And you add that to Godwin and uh, to um, Evans, now you don't know what to do as a defense. Who do you double up on? Who do you do this against? Who do you do that against? It's a really, really dangerous weapons there when you have, you know, Gronk, Godwin, uh, Evans, uh, you know, and the Buccaneers before, if you remember, if they used a similar offensive scheme to last year, there sometimes they went with three tight end set. That means you would have break, that means you would have Gronkowski and O.J. Howard all on the same field. I mean, I get fired up thinking about it. It's unbelievable. So just a great, great, you know, when you talk about receivers, this team is not weak. Now, let's go to the running backs. And I'm going to tell you, there's good here and there's not so good here. And let me explain why. Before we get to the running backs, I want to remind you all, if you're just joining we did set up a hotline tonight where you can call in, ask questions on any sports topics you want, whether it's the Buccaneers, the Rays, anything you want. You can call it. The number is listed. It's 
7008. One more time, 479-553-7008. When you call in, I will be live on the air. We will get to you momentarily. Just make sure there's no background noise. We only have one line currently, but after one person hangs up, the next one can call in. Or leave a message right here. We have a message where you can go ahead and leave comments and I will get to your question. If you have questions or thoughts on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, go ahead, leave it. That's what it's for. We want fan participation. So please ask your questions. But getting back to the running back. You know, Ronald Jones had a breakout year for Ronald Jones last year. You know, it was everything that they originally expected Ronald Jones to be, and maybe a little more. If you look at Ronald Jones from last year, he had 172 rushes, over 700 yards, six touchdowns, and most amazingly, 31 receptions out of the backfield. So a great, great job. Not a thousand-yard receiver, but remember, this was a team that relied on the pass a lot last year because they fell behind and Ronald Jones did not get to run the ball as much as they wanted to. So you have to remember that he did not run a lot, but, you know, give the guy kudos. I thought he showed us a lot last year and just an amazing, amazing job by Ronald Jones. And if he can up that a little bit more this year, it's going to be great. Then you add Deshaun Vaughn. Let me tell you about Keyshawn Vaughn a little bit. You know, when you look at Keyshawn Vaughn, okay, Keyshawn Vaughn, here is a guy that rushed for over um, a thousand yards his last two years at Vanderbilt. And when you play for Vanderbilt, you play in a strong SEC team, uh, you know, in an SEC division on conference. And it's hard to do that. He had some good breakaway runs. He's powerful, has some breakout speed. And he also, remember, the one thing about Keyshawn Vaughn is he can catch the ball out of the backfield. The only thing that I would say that scares me before we go to the Frankly Speaking Sports hotline here as we have a call before we get to that is the one thing I am worried about on this offense and maybe the only thing. You know, people talk about the offensive line. Offensive line is going to be fine, and we'll get into that in a little bit. But the one thing that scares me is they don't have a fullback on this team. They need a guy that can protect Brady in the backfield, a blocking running back. And I can't think of anybody on this team right now that can set up, like, let's say a Mike Allstock. You know, they had Allstock. They used him back in the day. He, I think he might have been the last fullback really they had way that you can block in the back i'm you know in the backfield you can go when you need a fir you know fourth and one or fourth and two and just some guy that can just power burst into the end zone so if i was saying the one thing that i think they are missing on this team and it's not much when it comes to offense would be a blocking running back or let's just call it a fullback that can protect, protect Tom Brady. Just that guy. I'd rather see them go with a two tight end set than a three tight end set and use a guy in the backfield maybe to protect that one extra guy to protect Tom Brady and give him just a couple of extra seconds to um, throw the ball. Um, before we get to the other offense, I want to go to the Frankly Speaking Sports Hotline, find out who we have on the phone. Who am I speaking to, please? Hi, Larry. This is Craig Frank calling from Tampa, Florida. How are you? Craig, how are you doing tonight, sir? I'm doing really good. Really enjoying your show. And um, you've been talking a little bit about the, uh, the Buccaneers and, and uh, that uh, possibly potent offense they might have. Uh, what's your thoughts about possibly getting Devontae Freeman? Uh, he's out there. He has interest. Uh, the Bucks seem to think he wants too much money, but... He said, call me and make me an offer. We had, Nothing's happened as of yet. Uh, and secondly, uh, what's your uh, thought about the Bucks taking a uh, uh, one of their tight ends and using them as a uh, blocking, uh, acting like a fullback to help in the backfield? What's your choice uh, of uh, thoughts on that? Okay, so you want to know about the fullback position, um, that position, your first question was about oh, Devontae first, Freeman. Devontae okay. Freeman. Craig, we want to thank you very much for calling. I'll go ahead and answer those questions for you. 
Um, as far as Devontae Freeman goes, uh, he has said and has been reported he wants to play for the Bucs. Now, anytime you get a Tom Brady and a Gronkowski and you build this team uh, around this offense, who wouldn't want to play with this team for less money? Your chances, you play the game to win a Super Bowl. What team has a better chance right now from an offensive standpoint than the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? I think Devontae Freeman is a great fit for um, for the uh, definitely... Uh, I want to make sure everybody can hear me out there. Can everybody hear me out there? Okay. Want to just make sure that I can be heard here. We're just checking stuff before I go there. All right, there we go. Um, if somebody on the line lets me know, um, if you can go ahead and hear me, great. I would appreciate it. We are making sure I got a message that we might be off here. All right, there we go. One of my listeners will let me know. I would really appreciate that. But going into it, um, Devontae Freeman would be a great fit. But once again, you need a blocking back. And, you know, Craig asked the question about a blocking line. I would rather see them spend that money on a fullback. You know, like a Bo Hannon. Uh, a Bo Hannon that is... Uh, you know, out of Jacksonville, somebody who's a beast like a Mike Allstott was. And I apologize, I know our Wi-Fi was for some reason I heard acting up. Hopefully we can get that back online and you guys can hear us. So I'll keep tuned to the message part of it. But De Devontae Freeman would be a great pick as far as a running back. But right now, you know, most importantly, you need to protect Tom Brady. He's your franchise. So to answer your question, Craig, I would go after a fullback first if there's a free agent guy out there that fills that position. Otherwise, um, you know, like I said, um, a tight end could set up back there, but you want to try to disguise, uh, you know, what you're doing uh, as much as possible. And if you're putting the tight end in the backfield all the time, they're going to know you're passing. Now, obviously on a third down passing situation, they're going to know anyway, but if you're trying to surprise the defense, um, then, you know, I, I don't like the idea of a tight end being used as a blocking back. Um, you know, now, if you want to maybe give Gronk the ball a couple of times and use him in that position where you fake guys out, you know, that's another story. That might be something you never know with Bruce Arians. He has been known to do crazier things. But, nah, I, I, I really think I like Devontae Freeman. I think the Bucks would be better. But they don't need Vaughn. They don't need Jones. And they don't need Freeman. I would say if you get Freeman, then you're going to have to make a move somewhere else. So that's my opinion there. Um, for those of you that are listening, hopefully you can hear us better. My Wi-Fi seems to be working over here. I just checked everything out. So if somebody could just uh, make sure on the other end, I would surely appreciate it. And want to let you all know, just like Craig did from Tampa, if you have any questions, topics you want to talk about with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the number to reach us is 479-553-7008. One more time, 479 Five five three seven zero zero eight. Give us a call. We'd love to get you live on our line or leave a message like some of you are doing right now um, under the comment section. Now, going into another key concern and a lot of people are asking about, and then we'll get off offense and we'll start talking about the defensive side. First of all, this offensive line, before I get into the kicking game, um, I'm not worried about it. People seem to worry about it. One of the things that Tom Brady is better at doing, well, one of many things than we had last year, is going to be getting rid of the football. Tom will not hold on to the football as long as Jameis Winston does. Um, you know, he definitely, definitely will not. You'll see Brady get rid of the ball a lot quicker. And I, that's why I said I'd love to see that back in the backfield that can protect him. Um, so the offensive line, I thought, overall did a great job. I mean, if you look at it, and this is what I have for the starting 
offensive line. And, you know, if anyone disagrees with me, that you know, as always, please respond. I got a left tackle, Donovan Smith. Left guard, Ali Mopet. Center, of course, is Ryan Jensen. Right guard, Alex Kappa. And uh, right tackle is going to be the new Tristan Wirfs, who we drafted number one in the draft. That is a solid offensive line. As long as they stay healthy. You know, a lot of people question, ah, we're giving Donovan Smith uh, a lot of money. He can't do that. He can't do this. You know, let, let's wait. Let's not jump, you know, let's not sell this guy out yet. I think Donovan Smith is a good, good um, left tackle. And I think this year when you have a veteran quarterback who knows what he's doing over there, you're going to see, you know, you're just going to see it so much better, this offensive line. It is so much, you, you cannot believe what confidence of having a terrific, great quarterback like a Tom Brady will do for an offensive line. These guys are professionals. They're in the National Football League. They know how to play football. They wouldn't be there if they weren't good enough. You know, it seems like it's always the offensive line's fault. It's always the offensive line's fault. Well, last year, it wasn't always the offensive line's fault. It was just as much as the quarterback's fault. And I don't want to get into that. Winston's gone. We're going to leave him gone. And we'll kick his butt when they come over, when they play us. But that's my philosophy on that. As far as the kicking game goes, Matt Gay had a rough year. And he really did. Uh... You know, Matt Gay was actually 23rd only out of 32 teams in the NFL. He only made 77% of his field goals last year. And how can we forget the last game of the season? I think he missed two field goals, an extra point. Um, and then, of course, versus the Giants, where I was right there, right there in the stands. You think you have an automatic win, and you miss a cheap shot of 34 yards. You cannot be 77% productive as a kicker in the NFL and expect to keep your job. So I think there's going to be a very, very tight leash on Matt Gay. And also, Matt Gay, there was only four other kickers in the NFL that was worse at extra point attempts. He only made 89.6% of extra points. By extra point percentage, I know that number, 89.6, that's good. It's terrible for extra points. And you can't have that. Now, as many of you Tampa Bay fans may not like it. There is a good possibility that another Patriot comes over to give him a, a little bit of pressure. And that's Steven Gronkowski. Um, the Patriots' all-time lean in scoring that um, has, you know, was released last year. If you look at Steven um, Goskowski, in his career, he has made 87.5% of field goals. That's a field goal. He's made 374 out of 428 field goals. And before 2019, when he was released, where he missed four extra points, just had a terrible year. He had a record streak going of 479 consecutive extra points. That's 479. Come on, Tampa Bay Buck fans. That's a number we never heard of. So this would be a good guy to come in, put a little pressure. He's a veteran. He knows how to win big games. I think it's a good chance to at least give him a shot and see what he has to offer. So we will see how that goes. Now let's go to the defensive side of the football. We talked about offense. Once again, any questions, topics, things you want to talk about, please go ahead and... Uh um, and let me know, okay? So I will definitely... Let's go ahead and give us a call at 479-553-7008. Uh, we do have a message on the message line from Rob down in Tampa. Would you like the Bucks to sign a vet like Shady McCoy or Freeman? Um, I don't know if he's talking about, I think he's talking about in the running game, if I, LaShawn McCoy and um, 
Freeman, I'm not big on running backs right now. I think, and I will say this, and I told Craig this as well, I am sold on you need a fullback. You need a guy to block. Ronald Jones will be fine running the ball. When you have a guy like Tom Brady who is going to complete more passes and keep the football in your possession than we've ever had before, you're going to allow more opportunities for the running game to exist. And here's a guy that couldn't run last year a lot of the times because the Buccaneers were falling behind. You know, how many games was it where, you know, Jameis Winston would give the other team a 7 nothing lead before we're even a couple minutes into the ball game? Well, you couldn't run the ball anymore. And I can only imagine if we could have ran the ball as much as Bruce Arians wanted to last year, how many yards Ronald Jones um would have. You're going to see a breakout year, and you think you saw a breakout year from Jones last year. I would not be surprised. I would be more surprised if Ronald Jones doesn't rush for a thousand yards next year than if he did, because you're really going to see. Uh, it's nothing like once Brady gets the lead, you know, that's when that running game is going to start up, and that's why I want that fullback, baby. And let's talk a little bit about defense here. Um, you know, when you look at the defensive side of the ball, you know, when you look at the line, you got what? Now, Dominic Sue at defensive end, left defensive end. You got Vita Vea, and then you got what? William Golston, probably at the right defensive end. Your line is solid. Here is a team that led the league, was number one, number one against the rush last year. Stopping the rush was not a problem for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Not at all. And then when you look at their linebackers, what? Jason Pierre-Paul. Pierre-Paul last year had eight and a half sacks last year and did not play the whole season because of a neck injury. Okay? You got him. You got Devin White, Levante David, and Shaq Kiel, and Shaq Barrett. Okay? Barrett had 19 and a half sacks. Just an incredible year last year. Those linebackers are tough. They got that thing. That's why that defense was so good against the rush. Where you're going to have to watch out. And I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be negative. I still think there's a lot of promise. Is those cornerbacks. When you look at the cornerback positions. And I have listed on the cornerback side. Carlton Davis. Um... And Sean Murphy Bunting. The one things that we were terrible on the defensive side of the ball last year is we only had 12 interceptions the whole year. I don't know if a lot of people realize that. Okay, we were terrible against the pass. Okay, I wrote down a couple of statistics that I looked at that I saw. And if you look at this, um, Sean Bunting led the team last year with only three interceptions. Our leading interception guy had three. That's it. Um, then you get, um, you know, they were first against the rush. They were almost last against the pass. Um, you know, if you look at the Bucks, you know, they were third in points offensively in the NFL, but they were 29th as far as giving up points last year. So it didn't matter how many points you scored because you were giving up too many points, and that was the passing game. You know, if you look at your opponent's stats last year, and this is what, and I'll get into this in a minute. Your opponents last year averaged four, uh, for the year 4,300 yards, 30 touchdowns. We only had 12 interceptions. Your 30th in passing defense, 25th in passing touchdowns allowed. Now, you got to remember, and I'll get into why I think this defense is going to be better in a second, but I just want to let these, you know, everybody know the facts before you go into saying how great the defense was. The defense did get better, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but I believe it was game 10, and somebody correct me if I'm wrong, they went on a four-game winning streak where that defense just started gelling. It looked terrific. I mean, everybody started attacking the ball, you know, and that was the thing that was missing the first 10 games of the year. They weren't playing aggressive Todd Bowles defense. They weren't attacking the ball, and then they started attacking the ball. And then, of course, the last two games, they, they, they lost on the season, but, 
you know, the one difference that's going to make, and, you know, people do not realize this in football is they talk about Tom Brady coming over, Gronk coming over, and how great the offense is going to be. But you got to realize when you get a quarterback and a receiver like that, you help your defense because, number one, you're going to get the ball in better field position, which is something that we were not great at. And number two, your defense is going to get more rest. Okay, you know, the corners came to play towards the end of the year. And now with them being able to get more of a breather and, you know, like I said it before, what you're going to have to ask yourself is this, Buck fans. Do you have a better chance of winning the game at the end of the game? The game goes down to the end. Do you have a better chance of Tom Brady taking your team 80 yards for the win, oh, I'm sorry, 75 yards for the winning touchdown, or do you have a better chance at your defense holding the opposing team from scoring and going 75 yards? And that's what it's going to come down to is in those close games, your defense is going to have to deliver, but your defense is going to be better. I saw a lot of good things. And, you know, you, I want to talk about Devin White. You know, I think people forgot about him last year because – he started off so slow. He was the number one pick in 2018. Uh, yeah, 2018. And he just came on and had an incredible second half of the season. When you talk about attacking the football, this guy did it. This guy was, I don't know if you knew this, second on the team in, in uh, tackles. He had 91 tackles. The only one that had more for him is probably the most underrated guy on that defense, and that's Levante David. Levante David had 123 tackles. Okay, and of course, everybody knows about Barrett, the 19 and a half sacks. Um, you know, what, look out this year if they could have Pierre Paul for the whole year, and which they should. I mean, he's healthy now. This, this defense could be dominant. Um, the, the key is going to be those cornerbacks. It really is going to be. And, you know, at, when you look at cornerback and you look at Murphy and and you look at, what is it, Carlton Davis, uh, Jamal Dean. And I thought Dean came on real well towards the end of the year as well. So, it's you know, they're a year older. Uh, you know, it's just, I'm not saying they're going to not do it, but that would be, if you say, where's your question mark on the defense, it's not at safety. This uh, Antoine Winfield Jr. is going to be outstanding. You guys are going to love this guy. He is like the quarterback of the defense, and he will act like it. He is a winner. So, you know, I think at strong safety, uh, and that's where a whole play, strong safety, and you put him with, what, Jordan Whitehead at free safety? Uh, you know, th they'll be fine, uh, and I think that's going to help cut down and help our pass defense a lot. But the big, big question is going to be how well that defense can hold up in a 16-game season now that they have a different quarterback on offense who hopefully will keep them off the field a lot longer in that heat in Tampa Bay. So... You know, a lot of questions to be asked. You know, I know Todd Bowles, I think he plays a 3-4 defense. Obviously, he goes with those three linemen up front. The four linebackers in back. And, you know, I would like to see the Buccaneers a little more this year. And, you know, I know I've known Todd Bowles for a long time now when he was with the Jets, the head coach for the Jets. And I would like to see the team get a little more aggressive at blitzing. I think you need a couple more all-out blitzes on this team, kind of fool up the uh, offensive line, make them be looking for different things. But with those guys, with Barrett and, you know, Pierre Paul, I mean, this, this defense has potential. And, you know, let's stop going. You know, I know all the Buck fans are excited, and so am I. I'm not going to lie. I, I mean, I'm doing my best to look like Bruce Arians right now. Hopefully, I can do that a little bit for you guys. You know, I'll be doing interviews soon for Bruce Arians Lookalike. But, you know, this team definitely has the potential. Definitely has the potential. 
but you have to show up each and every Sunday. If 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 the Bucks were destined to win the Super Bowl, they would give them the trophy already. They wouldn't even play the season. You have to show up every day. There are still questions on this team. We talked about the running back. How is Tom Brady's legs going to hold up? You know, I would love to think great, but remember, he is past 40 years old. What is he, 42, 43 years old? It's, it's a question mark. And the only reason it's a question mark is they have nobody to back him up. So those are my concerns, and there's not many. You by far have the best offensive team in football. I don't, right now, I can't think of a team that has more weapons offensively right now than the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And, you know, people will say, well, that's only if they stay healthy. Well, you can't, you can't guess health. Every team has to go through health. And that's where depth comes in. So, you know, we'll see if they go after um, Freeman. Or, you know, I don't I don't see they will not go after McCoy to answer Rob's question. I kind of gotten off the question a little bit. Um McC- McCoy is not his type of player. Is not his type of player. I could see Freeman possibly being in a Buck uniform, and not necessarily because the Bucks want him, which obviously if he signs with them, the Bucks want him because they wouldn't sign him. But it might be more because Freeman wants to be a buck. And, you know, when was the last time people were flocking to get to Tampa Bay to be part of a Buccaneer football team? I mean, we're used to winning games and winning the championship we did win on defense. Well, just because we had the best offense possibly in the NFL, we're still going to need our defense to win games. So it will come down to our defense this year. So we really, and you know, Todd Bowles, second year as a coordinator, I really think, I remember the second year in New York, he was, he had those guys so aggressive. I mean, you got whiplash trying to watch these guys fly around. So I think you're going to be very happy um, to see that this upcoming year. Want to remind you all that, um, We are on again tomorrow, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, but we have many different platforms. We have YouTube. If you want to watch any previous episodes or episodes in the future and you're on YouTube, go to our YouTube channel. It's Frankly Speaking Sports, and you can watch all the different shows you want that we have recorded live in the past. Also, going forward, we will continue to put them on. We also have one of the fastest growing Facebook groups out there, Frankly Speaking Sports. If you have friends, please ask them to join. You know, they're your friends. If you're enjoying it, why not let them enjoy it too? Also, we are on Twitter, at Larry Frankis. That's with the U.S. at the end. We retweet constantly as we get stuff from some of the best insiders in the world of sports, from the NBA to the NHL to football, to baseball, and so on, and so on. So you definitely want to do that as well. And then if you're in your car and you just can't, you know, you can't watch Facebook while you're in your car, at least you're not supposed to, at least here in Arkansas. Um, I think in Florida they allow that. But anyway, you know, you can listen to us on several different podcasts, from Ink FM to Apple to Google to... um, you know, there's one I'm forgetting, Spotify, one of the biggest ones out there. So, you know, enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Also, if there's any topics that you, know, you want to discuss with us, you know, let us know. Either leave me an email on, you know, our Facebook group, on one of these uh, platforms that you see, and I'll be more than happy to get that. If you want a special guest on the show, uh, you know, just let me know, and we'll be more than happy to try to get that guest. I don't care who it is. I will try to get that guest on our show for you. For those of you in the last closing minutes, if you missed last night's show, we had a one heck of a show talking about Major League Baseball, the commissioner, or the lack of a commissioner for better terms. And we also had, you know, the great, great play-by-play announcer of the Tampa Bay Rays, 
Dwayne Stats on with us. So if you missed that show, you may want to go back, re-listen to that show. Just a great, great interview, a great, great guy. And you talk about somebody, you know, you think we're, you know, really anticipating and wanting baseball to come back. There's a guy who's been doing it all his life, probably over 30 years, maybe even 40 years where he's been doing it. And you could just tell in his voice how much he missed the game of baseball and baseball not being there. But I'm not going to talk about baseball tonight. I told you I've been in a good mood. I do not want to talk about baseball. In the closing minutes, we'll give it a couple more seconds, see if we get anybody else on the Franklin Speaking Sports Hotline. Once again, that number is 479 553 7008. If you want to talk live on Frankly Speaking Sports, give us a quick call. We're getting close to the end of the show, so you want to do that pretty quickly here. Um, and let's see as I go down the list just to make sure I didn't miss anything. Nope. All right, so we got to all our questions so far. Want to remind you all that tomorrow, Wednesday night, we're going to start talking as we get closer to the season. We're going to start talking more about the Bucks. We'll definitely pick one night where we're just talking Bucks football, whether it's here on Frankly Speaking Sports or another affiliate. I'm not sure, but we will definitely be talking about the Buccaneers once a week. I'm thinking about Wednesday nights right now. Looks like the night that we will start dedicating till the season begins to Buccaneer football and the latest news and all your questions, all your concerns, all your topics. And we'll even try to get guests related to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers as far as getting some players on on Wednesday night. Uh, not tomorrow night now. That'll start next week as far as us doing it on a weekly basis. So start next weekend, uh, next week on Wednesday nights, we'll dedicate that to Tampa Bay Buccaneer football, and we'll try to get whether it's, um, you know, somebody from the local sports radio, from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, from the Tampa Bay Times, just somebody of that sort, we'll try to get so we can talk some Buccaneer football. Want to, you know, before we leave here, I want to thank you all so very much. Last night, we continue just to have record-breaking number of views on our Frankly Speaking Sports page, as well as all our other platforms. And, you know, I can't tell you how very, very thankful I am to all my listeners, to all the people that tune in on all the different platforms to Frankly Speaking Sports. I want to wish everybody a safe, safe Tuesday night. And we'll be back again tomorrow, Wednesday night, 9 p.m., for another episode of Frankly Speaking Sports.